Hello to all of my bat freaks, Dante D here, and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. I am so stoked about today's video. This is a video that I've wanted to do for a really, really long time, but just haven't got had the time to get around to it. Also, in addition, I'm sorry for my absence. I haven't been able to post on a regular basis lately uh, just because of the world situation. I work in healthcare and uh, it's been monopolizing a lot of my time. Things are kind of slowing down a little bit at work now, so hopefully I have a little bit more time to make videos. So this is the top 15 Batman villains of all time. Like I said, I've had this these slides ready probably a few months ago, just haven't been able to get around to this. Uh, but I'm super stoked and super excited to be able to talk to you about my my opinion on the top 15 Batman villains of all time, starting with number 15, and that is Mr. Bloom. Now, Mr. Bloom is a relatively new uh, Batman villain uh, who's actually created by uh, Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo, and he first appeared in the New 52 uh, Batman run. So, his real name is unknown. Uh, his first appearance was in Batman number 43 in, in October 2015. Mr. Bloom, I just really kind of resonated with me. Uh, he's a really, really creepy looking villain. Kind of reminds me a lot of the uh, the Slender Man. And uh, I, I was just super intrigued by him from the minute uh, that, I, that I saw him represented on the page. And I really can't wait to see what DC does with this character in the future because I think they they really got a good one on their hands here. Uh, as always, uh, because collecting nowadays is getting really expensive, I try to provide readers picks for all these villains. So if you're interested in reading anything about Mr. Bloom, uh, I definitely recommend reading Batman New 52 Volume 8 and 9. If you're interested in picking these up, the link will be in the description. Going on to number 14, we have Anarchy. And Anarchy actually, in comparison to other Batman villains, is also relatively new. Uh, he made his first appearance in November 1989 in Detective Comics number 608. I actually have that comic book. Uh, and, uh, and you know what? Tell you the truth, I found that one in a dollar bin. Uh, and I don't, I don't think you'll find it in a dollar bin anymore. Actually, you might get lucky and find it in a dollar bin. But uh, if you don't, it's actually still a relatively uh, inexpensive book if you want to pick it up. Uh, his real name is Lonnie, is that Mackin or Mashin? I don't even know how to say it, but, uh, he's actually a young man, uh, as you find out in the comics, but also if you haven't seen him in the comics, he makes a, uh, he plays a quite a significant role in, uh, Batman Arkham Origins, uh, which I thought was really cool. If you want to read quite a bit about Anarchy, one of my favorite Anarchy runs is in the, uh, New 52 Detective Comics. And that's Detective Comics. Volume 7, and it's simply entitled Anarchy. And again, you can pick the reader's pickup in the description. Poison Ivy. I'm sure some of you are probably expecting Poison Ivy to be higher in the list. Uh, she's not not really my favorite Batman villain, but she is, uh, she is quite significant. Uh, her name is Pamela Lillian Isley, and uh, she's a, also a relatively new uh batman villain now by new i mean when you compare her to the the classic batman villains that appeared during the golden age uh she first made her appearance in batman number 181 in june 1966 this book is actually very expensive if you're looking to pick it up very very expensive uh it's it's it continues to go up in price just because it's it's poison ivy uh, if you want to read more about Poison Ivy, I really recommend picking up uh, Batman Arkham Poison Ivy. The Batman Arkham series was actually really cool. I believe most of the books are still in print now, but basically what they did with Batman Arkham is they took each significant Batman villain and they published a, a trade paperback with a collection of stories that are the most significant uh, to that character. And uh, I, I just think it's great. I actually have uh, a few of them. If you're interested in uh, Batman Arkham Poison Ivy, uh, the link will be in the description. Poison Ivy is a character, even though she's not my favorite, I really hope that uh, DC give her another shot in the movies. Uh, the only movie appearance that she's ever had was in Batman and Robin 1997. And we all know how that uh, went. Even though uh, 
it was uh, Uma Thurman, who was an Academy Award winning actress who played Poison Ivy. Uh, the, the, the other aspects of the film just rendered it terrible. And it was a complete flop uh, critically. I think commercially it did okay, but critically it was just panned by critics. It's considered to be one of the worst movies ever made. Number 12, Catwoman. Catwoman's been around for a long time, and uh, she continues to grow in popularity today, mostly because today she's not really seen as a villain. She's mostly uh, kind of considered a, an, an anti-hero. But uh, she originally started off as a villain, and her first appearance was in Batman number one in spring 1940. Her real name is Selina Kyle. Catwoman's really known for being uh, Batman's love interest in so many different books. And uh, she's had a few screen representations, uh, my favorite being Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. I really like to know, because I think we've had Michelle Pfeiffer, Halle Berry, and I uh, forget that the other actress's name, uh, who was in the Dark Knight Catwoman. Uh, I have to say, I see her face right now, but it's not, it's not popping into my head. Anywho, uh, my favorite Catwoman, though, was uh, definitely Michelle Pfeiffer. Let me know who your favorite Catwoman is in the comments. Uh, and if you're interested in reading a little bit more about Catwoman, uh, I definitely would recommend picking up Catwoman, A Celebration of 75 Years. This is a honking book. It's very, very thick, and it has all of the most significant Catwoman stories ever published. So I think if you want to know a lot about Catwoman, definitely pick up that book there. Number 11, Raish Al Ghul. Now, some people will call him Ra's al Ghul. Uh, I actually started off calling him Ra's al Ghul. Uh, I think they call him Ra's al Ghul in the Batman Begins film. The Batman animated series calls him Raish al Ghul. And I actually had to look this up. And Denny O'Neill, uh, who was involved in creating Raish al Ghul, uh, his daughter actually took the name to the language department at her university and asked someone to say, to, to, to pronounce it correctly, and it is indeed Raish al Ghul. Uh, so now that we have that out of the way, uh, his first appearance is in Batman 232, and that was in June 1971, also a very, very expensive book. Uh, but if you're looking to just read about this awesome, awesome villain who uses a Lazarus pit and swims in it all the time, <laughs> uh, I definitely recommend picking up Batman Arkham, uh, Rachel Ghoul. I actually have this book. It's very good. Has a lot, great collection of uh, Rachel Ghoul stories, including his first appearance. And uh, you won't be disappointed if you pick up this reader's pick. Of course, link is in the description. Number 10, we have Killer Croc. Killer Croc, believe it or not, is uh, is one of my favorites. I don't know why. I just, I just think he's such a cool villain. And uh, I personally love this artwork. Uh, I believe this is from Batman Earth. Batman Earth 1, number 2. Uh, great, great Killer Croc art. But uh, his real name is uh, Waylon Jones. He first appears in Detective Comics number 524. This is his full appearance. There is a little bit of uh, debate over what his true first uh, full appearance was. I actually, I was under the impression that it was always uh, Batman 357 or 358, one of the two. But apparently it's 524. So, uh, yeah. Now, Waylon Jones, uh, Killer Croc, I've always thought was a great villain. He's, he's played such a significant role in uh, a lot of the Batman Arkham games. The bo boss fight in Batman Arkham Origins with him is just really cool, especially when he's snapping his jaws. It's just they do such a great job uh, with that in, uh, in the game. And I think he's only had one screen appearance, and that was in the Suicide Squad movie. And I really hope DC does a little bit more with him. I know he's kind of seen more as like a like a thug, and he he's more of a goon and works for other huge villains as opposed to working for on, on his own. But I really hope that um, DC kind of does a little bit more with him on screen. Uh, now, here's a fun fact about Killer Croc. Everyone thinks that he's a humanoid. Uh, but uh, he actually is the victim of a skin condition called ichthyosis. 
And it's actually a real thing. Uh, you can look it up on Google, ichthyosis. It's like I-C-H-T-Y-O-S-I-S, -I, I think. Don't quote me on that, but it's something like that. Uh, it just makes your skin look a little scaly and dry and itchy and things like that. Obviously, they're, they kind of exaggerate it <laughs> with Killer Croc. Uh, and they make it super, super severe. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's what that skin condition is called. You want to... Read a little bit more about Batman Killer Croc. Again, I'm going to uh, recommend the Arkham series uh, where they have Killer Croc as the uh, the feature. And you can pick up that reader's pick with the link in the description. Number nine, Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze, uh, again, is, is another one of my favorite Batman villains. And uh, I think my favorite Mr. Freeze story to this day would probably be Batman... The New 52 Batman Annual Number 1. Great, great art by Jason Fabok. And uh, it was a really cool story and a really cool spin on uh, Mr. Freeze. So I, I check that one out if, uh, if you can. Uh, but uh, his first appearance was in Batman Number 121, February 1959. Another very, very expensive book. Looked it up on eBay. You're looking at thousands if you want to get that book. Uh, but if you want to just read a little bit about Mr. Freeze, uh, check it out. He's in... Batman Arkham, again, I'm recommending the Arkham series, Mr. Freeze, and it has all the most important uh, Mr. Freeze stories ever published. And I think this one, it, it does include the, uh, for sure includes the first appearance, but I think it also includes that uh, Batman story that was referring to uh, in Batman Annual number one from the New 52. Just a really cool spin on the story. I just think he's such a cool uh, villain because... He doesn't really have evil intentions. Like this is a guy who's just trying to save his wife. And I find him very, uh, very sophisticated. And he's almost kind of poetic uh, in the way he speaks. I, I really like Mr. Freeze. Of course, his screen representation by Arnold Schwarzenegger was just horrific. I, I couldn't stand it. Uh, and I really hope that DC includes him in another film in the future. Because I really think if done right this uh, villain would be amazing on screen. Uh, I really like how they portrayed him in the Batman Arkham video games. Uh, the voice, the the boss fights with him in uh, in Arkham City, like just, just great. Love, love Mr. Freeze. Number eight, we have the Riddler. I'm kind of hit and miss with the Riddler. Um, I don't know, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with the Riddler. Uh, I mean, I do like the Riddler in the uh, in the Batman Arkham games. And yeah, I'm one of the few people that actually kind of likes collecting those trophies <laughs> uh, in those games. But uh, but yeah, in the comics, yeah, he, he the Riddler makes for a pretty good story, especially Batman Earth 1 Volume 2. Great, great Riddler story uh, in that one. Uh, his real name, of course, is Edward Nigma. Uh, his first appearance was in Detective Comics number 140 in October 1948. And if you want to read more about the Riddler, I definitely would recommend the Batman Arkham Riddler book. And uh, Batman Zero Year, uh, they do a lot with the Riddler in the Batman New 52. After they get all that uh, Joker stuff out of the way in the death of the family, they move into Zero Year, which is a very long uh, Riddler story. Uh, it was pretty good. I enjoyed it. I, I, I personally enjoyed Death of the Family, the Court of Owls, better in the New 52, but the uh, the Zero Year Riddler story was serviceable. Actually, it was a little bit more than serviceable. It was pretty good, but um, they had they had big shoes to fill with uh, uh, with this Riddler story. So, uh, and his screen representation uh, was uh, I think there's only one, and that was with. Uh, Jim Carrey, uh, and of course, by one, I, I'm excluding the uh, Batman 1966 uh, television show. But uh, for film representation, it's just Jim Carrey as the Riddler in in Batman Forever. And a lot of people kind of panned uh, Jim Carrey's performance. And, you know, I, I really don't think that's how the Riddler should be, like how Jim Carrey played him. Uh, I really think that... Jim Carrey and Two Face in that movie were acted a little bit more like the Joker, uh, and I really think the Riddler would be a little bit more methodical. <laughs> but uh, you know what? I found Jim Carrey's performance funny. It was 
fun. And uh, you know what? Overall, I would say I like it. But if they do the Riddler again in the future, I really think they need to focus on a more um, sophisticated, a little bit more, uh, you know, methodical Riddler. Number seven is Bane. Uh, you're probably wondering how the heck has Bane come before the Riddler? And that's just because I think Bane is just a cooler villain. Uh, he's only been around since like the 90s. Uh, his real name, I actually didn't know this. His real name is Eduardo Dorrance. And uh, his first appearance was in Batman Vengeance of Bane number one. Great great story i love batman vengeance of bane number one uh, i have that in my collection and i just really really enjoyed it uh recommended reading uh for for bane is uh obviously the batman nightfall series this is uh believe it or not it's actually batman nightfall that put bane front and center in the 1990s it was not uh vengeance of bane uh but he just skyrocketed to popularity with uh, nightfall Love Nightfall. I know a lot of people think it was a gimmicky type of uh, storyline that was everything wrong with the 1990s, but uh, it, it was a good gimmick. I really enjoyed the story. Really awesome how they kind of slowly, how Bane slowly wears Batman down to the point where he can just break him. It, it's really cool. Uh, screen representations, we had, uh, we had that awful screen representation of Bane in 1997, which was just horrific uh they basically made him a brainless thug uh but we all we all know in the comics that bane is actually quite intelligent uh, and i think they definitely corrected that with tom hardy's bane uh they got bane right in the uh the dark knight rises and uh personally loved loved that performance by tom hardy i think tom hardy's just a great actor to begin with but uh him as bane was just was just perfect so you want to uh the reader's picks, if you're looking to pick up the reader's picks, uh, links will be in the description. Number six is the Penguin. Another character that I think is actually pretty uh, interesting. Now, his real name is Oswald Cobblepot. He's usually uh, portrayed as this, uh, as this man who, you know, is had difficulty coming to terms with the fact that he was born with many physical deformities. Uh, he's often seen as being abandoned by his parents. Uh, I think he's he is an interesting character, but you know, then he grows up to be this uh, this this thug and kind of like mob boss. His first appearance was in Detective Comics number fifty eight from nineteen forty one, uh, and as far as screen appearances go, I believe his uh, only movie appearance. Uh, I mean, of course, we have the we had the uh, Burgess uh, Meredith performance in the 1960s but uh the screen performance i'm thinking of is danny devito and he killed the penguin i love in a, in a good way i don't mean he killed it like killed the character but like he just nailed that role perfectly he had the he was the perfect size he he just now i think the penguin that was portrayed in tim burton's movie was a little crazier than the than the uh penguin that we see in the comic books uh but I think that penguin was just so Tim Burton esque and just so perfect in a Tim Burton movie. I, I love Danny DeVito's penguin, and if DC ever decides to uh, put the penguin in another movie again, I think it's going to be hard to top Danny DeVito's performance uh, as the penguin. Uh, just, just such a super job, and I really think if I were DC. I would not put the Penguin in another movie just because Danny DeVito's performance was so amazing. Let me know what you thought of Danny DeVito's performance. I know I'm probably hyping it up a little bit too much, but uh, I, I, I loved it. Just, just great. Uh, if you want, uh, if you want to read a, a, a little bit more about the Penguin, uh, some of the best Penguin stories are Batman Arkham Penguin. Obviously, they have all the most significant Penguin stories. But I also recommend, if you haven't read it already, Batman Earth One Volume One. Uh, the Penguin actually is the mayor in that uh, in that book. And it actually kind of echoes a little bit of the storyline of uh, Batman Returns, Tim Burton's Batman Returns from 1992. It's, it's a great story. I love the Batman Earth 1 series. And I believe Volume 3 is supposed to be coming out soon. And I'm really excited to pick that one up. But uh, if you want to pick up either one of these uh, readers' picks, uh, the links will be in the description. We are now in our top five with... Scarecrow being 
Number five. I don't know how I put Scare why I put Scarecrow before the Penguin, because I actually like the Penguin better than Scarecrow. But uh, he is a pretty significant uh, villain. I think the reason why is just because he played such a huge role in uh, Batman Arkham Knight, and uh, in a lot of uh, in also in Batman Begins. Uh, his real name is uh, Jonathan Crane. And his first appearance was in World's Finest, number three, in fall of 1941. So he's been around for a while. Uh, if you want to pick up uh, some some Scarecrow reading and you're really interested in the Scarecrow, you want to know some of his best stories, uh, of course, I'm going to recommend, again, the Batman Arkham series featuring the Scarecrow. Again, the link will be in the description. Number four, Harley Quinn. Here is another character uh who is relatively new to the scene she's only been around since the 1990s but she has just shot up in popularity if you ask anybody about batman villains even someone who doesn't really know about batman you just say you know name a couple batman villains you know they might say you know like joker penguin you know harley quinn likely will be there uh it's just amazing how much of a cultural impact uh, she made and it's actually kind of hilarious because she didn't even make her first appearance in comic books her first appearance was in the 1992 uh, batman uh, animated series and uh, then she went on to make her first appearance in batman adventures uh, number 12 which is one of the most expensive comic books coming out of the 1990s along with like you know new mutants 98 uh now if you're really interested in Harley Quinn, uh, there are a lot. There's a lot to pick for great Harley Quinn stories. If you're just looking for kind of like you know, kind of a general overview, like essential Harley Quinn, I probably would recommend picking uh, Harley Quinn: Celebration of 25 Years. It has all the most significant Harley Quinn stories in there. Uh, but if you're looking for some really well done Harley Quinn stories that are just great reads, I would definitely recommend picking up Mad Love. And uh, also Harleen. I recently read Harleen uh, just a couple months ago, and it's great. It's uh, part of the uh, the DC Black Label, and it's just it's a great, great uh, graphic novel. And I I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. If you're interested in picking up any of these uh, any of these these books, uh, the link will be in the description, of course. Number three, Two Face. Good old Harvey Dent. Uh, you know, and Harvey Dent is another interesting character just because he starts off as this, you know, stand-up citizen who's a district attorney and he stands up for justice. And uh, then ironically, he becomes the very thing that pretty much he was fighting against. But he also struggles because, you know, he's trying to uh, maintain, like the Harvey Dent side of him is always kind of at odds with his two-faced side it's just really really cool uh he's had some screen appearances too there's tommy lee jones and batman forever wasn't a big fan of that two-face and batman forever uh the only reason why i like batman forever is really for the riddler uh and val kilmer did an actually pretty good job too but uh and then we also had uh we had two-face in uh the dark knight by uh, christopher nolan which is great great performance uh, but if you're interested in uh, reading up more about Two-Face, I recommend picking up Two-Face Celebration of 75 Years. Of course, uh, the link will be in the description. Number two, The Court of Owls. And you're probably like, how the heck is Court of Owls number two? <laughs> well, The Court of Owls is, um, along with Mr. Bloom, the newest of the villains on this list. And the Court of Owls have just made such a name for themselves in such a short period of time. And they are in what is arguably one of the best Batman stories ever written. Their first appearance was in Batman number three from the New 52 in December 2011. And uh, you can actually pick up Court of Owls reading relatively cheaply and relatively easily. For how popular they are, uh, my personal read, my personal favorite readers pick. Uh, if you want to know a lot about the Court of Owls, would be the uh, Court of Owls saga, and it, and it is an essential DC edition. Uh, pick it up; it has the entire Court of Owls 
uh, run in it from uh, the New 52 Batman. Great story. I'm, I'm telling you, if you haven't read the Court of Owls run yet, you need to pick up this book and check it out because it is just that good. One of my favorite Batman stories of all time. And I'm not overhyping it because it really is that good. Uh, so if you're looking to pick that up, of course, link will be in the description. Of course, number one, I will probably be no surprise, and that is the Joker. <laughs> Real name unknown. And I think that is probably what is so interesting about the Joker, because people just love to theorize about the Joker's origins. His his origin has been told in so many different fashions over the years, but you know, the, the general consensus is he's like, he was like a failed comedian and, you know, he's failing as a comedian, needs money and uh, gets in with the wrong crowd, falls into a vat of chemicals and becomes this crazed lunatic who looks kind of like a, like a clown. Uh, it, he's had numerous iterations over the years, uh, but the way he's being portrayed in recent years, like in the last 20 years, has just been great. He's just this psychotic maniac who's but is very methodical and very intelligent uh his first appearance was in batman number one from spring 1940 and i have to say i'm not a huge fan of golden age reading um because as a reader i find the golden age stories kind of kind of bland you know they're really they're really kind of they're, they're, they're just kind of boring you know they're like this happens and this happens and this happens and that's it you know it, there, there's nothing to them but i have to say that first joker appearance story is great i actually like it i think it really kind of holds up by today's standards and just a really enjoyable story it's like the joker getting on the radio saying he's gonna murder all these different millionaires and steal the diamonds and no one knows how he's doing it even with all this police protection it's just great and it's it's amazing because uh in the batman dark knight film uh they kind of uh pay homage and tribute to that uh when uh <laughs> with i think it was with the mayor they're saying that you know, he, the Joker says he's going to kill the mayor and uh, they have all this police protection around him. And then the mayor goes to drink this like glass of scotch or something. And then he dies. It's just, it's just really cool. And they kind of pay homage to that, which I, I you know, I thought uh, I geeked out at that moment for sure. Uh, if you're looking for some amazing Joker stories, there are, ooh, there, there are tons of them, but I think the most essential ones are Batman death of the family from the new 52, which came out, uh, within the last 10 years. Uh, great, great book. Uh, we have the Joker Omnibus and uh, Batman the Killing Joke. These are all great Joker stories. I would recommend any one of them. Uh, definitely pick them up. And of course, the link will be in the description. So that brings us to the end of, uh, of this list. Oh, here are, the, here's the, here are the photos of the different books. There are just so many of them that I couldn't fit them on that one slide. So I had to put them here. Uh, so yeah, pick, pick them up. Uh, yeah. So who was your favorite Joker? I'd like to know who your favorite Joker was. Cause uh, you know, the Joker has had many different screen iterations. We've had Cesar Romero. We've had, uh, Jack Nicholson. We've had, uh, I mean, even, uh, Mark Hamill, he does the voice. Then we've had, uh, uh, Heath Ledger, the late Heath Ledger as well. Uh, my personal favorite probably is Jack Nicholson, but, uh, you know, a lot of people are going to say their favorite was uh, Heath Ledger. So let me know, are you in the Heath Ledger camp or the Jack Nicholson camp, or are you in a different camp altogether? So that about does it for our list today. I really hope you enjoy it. Do you agree with this list? If not, let me know who you think are the best Batman villains. Of course, let me know in the comments. And uh, as always... Subscribe, like the video, share if you'd like. It really helps out the channel. This is Dante D signing off. I will see you all in the next episode. <laughs>